On the other end, I got Michael Dean. What's up, Mr. Michael? W. Yo. Dean, please say Yo. the whole thing. I am Michael W. Dean. I'm using my... Uh, I'm going to turn it down a little bit because you... Uh, there. there we go. So I'm using All my right. $17 mic. I did a blog post about my $17 mic. $17? Yeah. Wow. Because remember, we had that caller who sounded amazing, and like he was using a $40 dynamic mic. And we don't use dynamic mics. We use ribbon and uh, condenser. So yeah. I was like, I'm going to try to outdo him and get a cheaper mic and, and do better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. And you did. Well, I don't know if you did better. Did you think you did better? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I think I did. I mean, what do you think? I mean, I, I don't think I did better than our ribbon mics, but uh, maybe I'm using a little tube preamp too. Um, I'll just continue. We're just gonna we're gonna have a weird episode today. We're gonna like uh, talk about things that we're working on that we were talking about before that we don't have time to not talk about because a hurricane's coming and Andre's working with us on a wrap and he's in New Jersey, so we have to get him. New on. Jersey. So we're gonna have him call in and we're just gonna talk about the rap we're recording called Obama's Feet Stink. Are you supposed to use his real name like that? I, I, I don't think you should use a rapper's real name. That's not cool. Oh, yeah. Not cool. Right. Okay. Uh, Rich Black, <laughs> a.k.a. Silver Stacks. Silver Stacks, yeah. a.k.a. A-Palm. I like to call yeah. him A-Palm. Yeah. Yes. A-Palm. Like A-Palm like to it. your face when I pimp slap you. Kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, A-Palm. Agent Orange. I guess he could be Agent Black. That's racist. <laughs> Why gotta be so racist? Yeah, we we were uh, texting about it about doing the the Romney and Obama faux debate that we're gonna do as the last verse of the rap, and uh, he was like, "I guess I'm Obama then." <laughs> I was like, uh, "LOL, um, yeah, I guess." Or it might be funny to do it the other way. That that my, I thought that might actually be funny. <clears throat> if well, I did Obama. Here's what I was he thinking too: is if if. Uh, we don't get the footage of the third verse from him in time w of the debate between him as Obama and you as Romney or me as Romney or whatever. If we don't get his in time, I think we could use stock footage of those two presidents and just loop them and kind of like stutter them under your talking and put them in like red, white and blue Fox framing with their names under it. You, know? you could, you could. Uh, and you could even, you know, if you had the time and the energy and the effort, you could make it sound like they were saying our words. But nah. you're you're doing the video editing, and that would be up to you if you want to take it that far. Yeah, and I'm already dealing with footage that he's going to shoot. His footage looks good, Andre's footage, but it's shot on an uh, iPhone, and it's weird format. And he sent me. Well, a we've test always last had night problems doing doing with Apple, Apple oriented PC. things with uh, not only PC but Adobe Premiere as opposed yeah. to Final Cut Pro. Apple, you know, Apple, why do they do that, man? Because Steve Jobs, as Richard Stallman said, Steve Jobs made jail cool. And you said, I know, but it, it's so he didn't just cool. Make, yeah. And he didn't, he didn't make it cool. It's still not he cool. Just, he Steve just Jobs made, made jail. jail. Yeah. <laughs> yep. What a D bag. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, th I thought they were slowly getting better because the market was forcing them to, I mean, I, I, maybe I'm wrong on this, but I feel like maybe, uh, didn't I, I pods used to only be usable on like an apple system and yeah. not on a windows system and then they they realized the folly of that if they wanted to be the main main the main. dominant uh, yeah. Uh, yeah mp3 player so the market forced them to be less jaily if you um, want to be dominant like it should do that with other things right if you want to be dominant you have to be able to play well with others mm, mm. yeah you know apple, maybe apple. what what drives their their non-market forces as far as being like that with media production is the fact that uh you know they're probably some of their biggest buyers are mainstream tv news stations for final cut pro and buying max and stuff and those kind of places almost are run like their own little state so so i was watching the uh the weather report for the hurricane coming oh by the way larkin rose i wrote to him today and said hey let's do an interview next week for the gumbo and he said um, if neither the election nor the hurricane finishes me off, yeah, let's do an interview. <laughs> Is he out there in the East Coast too, or what? Yeah, anarchists and hurricanes. Oh my! Yeah, he's in oh, Philly. No. I oh, think or thereabouts. Yeah. But, Why can't uh, the hurricane hit DC? I mean, that'd be nice. <laughs> the Republicans are always pretending they're going to shut the government down. Maybe we need a good old hurricane to do it for real. Harry Reid was in a bad limo accident. That just sounds like. Quality, rich people problems. He was in a bad limo <laughs> First accident. Room problems. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, my limo's in the shop. I gotta take the damn town car. <laughs> Shit. The town car. When I did the Deauville Film Festival and they flew me to France to show the to present the Selby movie, 
they picked me up at the Paris airport at a town car, drove me a mile yeah. away or an yeah. hour away. It was pretty sweet. It was like, you know, car. black sedan with a French, little French man in a suit. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. They mm. pretend they don't speak English too. So speaking of other countries, I'm using the Russian tube modded uh, preamp here, this cheap little $80 preamp with my $70 mic. And but you're, you're going to flip that preamp. You don't want, nope, it. You don't want it anymore. No, nope, nope, I it. do. I'm going to keep the Russian tube. I'm not sending it to you. Yeah. I'm going to send you the cheap Chinese tube as a spare uh mm. some indian given or white man given on the cast <laughs> live this whole cast is just gonna be the, the same conversation Neem and i were having before it, it, sh it should be politician given instead of indian given right i, mean, I like it i like it yeah 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 the politicians government, gives, government gives, given because they give stuff out but they have to take it from you in the first place government given that that's that's the definition. That's that's better than the definition of Indian given. It's politician yeah. given. So government I'm gonna try. No, I'm gonna, you're right. Government given. Government I'm, given. I'm standing up like a rapper with my mic and my headset, like walking around the room like a oh, yeah. street preacher. Yeah. You're mic controlling now. That's what they call yeah. it. Mic controller. Ah. Uh, what does that mean? Does that mean just holding it, or does it mean using good mic technique with it? That's just a term rappers use to describe themselves. You know, like the DJ would be the beat controller because he's contro controlling the beat or the producer. The rapper's the mic controller. It, it's just kind of cool because it's a cool verb to, to use control for what you're doing to the mic. It's like, I'm, I'm the, dominant over this mic. I I'm will the, make it <laughs> make sounds sound awesome. I'm the everything controller. I've been micromanaging you and, and Rich Black <laughs> for like 50, 72 hours. Like, yes, emailing yes. you, paging you, calling you. Every five You're minutes. the would-be anarchist dictator I over am. our little private uh, organization here. No, I'm like the anarchist Phil Spector who only uses guns for good, not evil. <laughs> okay, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, you know, I I guess the thing is though that you actually um obsess about these things so much, and in the end, that ends up being a good thing because yeah. Uh, even though you're kind of a hard ass. Um, at least we end up getting shit done. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, as opposed to bands I've been in, some bands I've been in were like everyone, people were hard asses and nothing got done, like Slish. Well, I guess we got yeah. some good tunes out of it in the can, but yeah. Yeah, Slish was pretty dope, man. I, I dug yeah. it. Yeah, Obama's Feet Stink. So Obama's Feet Stink is a song based on a loop by a, we can't name him, but a septuagenarian uh, friend of ours who said in passing, while we had mics running for some reason, he said, uh, <laughs> Obama's feet stink. He's a liar and his feet stink. And, yeah, yeah. and, uh, and rich black silver stack said, man, that, that was awesome. What, uh, that guy said, it was just out of nowhere. It's <laughs> like, we all hate Obama, but no, I don't think anybody's ever dissed his feet before. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of an his old guy thing. Stink. I've never heard it about Obama, but I think I've heard it like 30 years ago. Some yeah, other old man yeah. said it about some, it's, it's a way it's an old guy, polite. It's a way of like, being really disgusting without being filthy, you know, without cussing uh, or like like about, your mom sucks sucks eggs instead of you know your yeah, mom, but that's implying your mom was on my dick. But that's last implying night. what it's implying. This is not even mm. it's just like really, yeah, and his feet stink. Yeah, <laughs> Obama's feet stink. Yeah. Also, it's kind of like uh, you know, I know you like to think your shit don't stink. Uh, you know, yeah. Obama might think he's, his feet don't human. stink, yeah, but they sure as hell do. So do and you guys, they're, they're so, super so smelly. What's the status on the end of those raps? There, you, uh, you, you wrote your parts. We're writing, them? We're, we're writing them back and forth through text. No, it's if you've listened to rap, you've heard this kind of thing before, where one MC will spit a line, the other MC will spit a line, and they'll just go back and forth. You're gonna have, you a, have, to, you're gonna have a written out rap battle between the candidates. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. but really, you can't do that unless you do. Uh, I I haven't thought of a way to do it other than I'll write my line and he'll play off of that line and then I'll play off of his line because otherwise you won't get it to rhyme and you won't get it to actually be a counterpoint. So yeah, um, it, it, which is hard to do if you're not in the same room. Like if we were, I, if yeah. we could collabo in the same room, it would have been done already. I'd have been like, oh, I'm gonna spit it like this, and then you spit it like that, and be like, okay, okay, and then I'm gonna say this, and I'm like, ah, I'll come back with that. But when you got to do it over text and pigeon, it, it takes a little bit longer. So, yeah, and they made um, it look really spontaneous in 8 Mile, but that was all in a script somewhere, you know? <laughs> well, what it was portraying wasn't, but yeah, on on, t on TV it was, or in the movies. But we'll, we'll uh, be back and talk more about this in just a bit. All right. Worms. Two-aught-twelve. And uh, we've also got Michael W. Dean. 
And um, maybe we'll have some callers later. We've got a specific caller we want to get on the line, but he's out trying to prepare for New Jersey Armageddon Hurricane, blah, blah, blah. What's the hurricane's name, Mike? We'd, we'd know, like man. to do a oh. shout out here to Rich Black, a.k.a. Rich Silver Black. Stacks. AKA I know it's going to be a wet. I know it's going to be cold and wet there on the Jersey Shore. So take care and ho- hold your loved ones tight and wear a sweater. <laughs> Isn't that something sweater. DJs used a to do? Co- like a, a local DJ sweater, if you got one. <laughs> Ew. Yeah, 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 yeah. Local DJs would like tell you what you should be doing with your night. <laughs> yeah, I remember when the hurricane comes on King of the Hill. Um, who's Dale's wife? Who's a t- no? It's uh, it's Luann from Eight Mile filling in for Luann's wife on the local news, and she says, "Hug your babies tight. There's a hurricane coming." <laughs> I like that. Yeah, really, yeah. Hug your babies tight. Uh, Marvin Zindler, who is like the whitest guy in the world, uh, he used to be on the local news in Houston. He was the guy who, um, have you ever heard of the, the story of the best little whorehouse in Texas? I know uh, the movie. With he's Reynolds the guy who shut it down. And Dolly he's like Parton. The re- right. Marvin Zindler was the reporter who did like this expose and got it shut down. And then in his old age, uh, they sort of put him out to pasture, but he was still on the air. Like he would read the, the health department's reports on different restaurants and like out <laughs> them on the air and he had a catchphrase called slime in the ice machine and they even did like a little jingle it was like they say it's slime in the ice machine da, 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 da. <laughs> and at the end of every bit he would go uh it was just wrote he would say uh hopefully you have a good evening good weekend good golf good tennis or whatever makes you happy and uh, he's got like this platinum hair, white hair, and he's just like the whitest guy ever. And it's just funny because the the two things he thinks of for having fun on the weekend are golf and tennis. <laughs> he does say wow. whatever makes you happy, but I'm I'm sure he would not include going to a whorehouse since he doesn't want people who go to whorehouses to be happy. He's dirty, dirty. I have a quick dirty, announcement. Statist. We just heard an we just heard an ad for the uh, gun training with the non aggression principle DVD. It will be available forever, but it's twenty five bucks on Amazon. I have. Three copies left at $15 each, autographed, postpaid within the U.S. If you're listening on October 28th, uh, yeah, write me on Facebook or write me at uh, talkback at freedomfiends.com, and I'll set you up. We take silver, too. I've gotten silver for a few of them. It's good. So look at that thing I just pigeoned you. It's the top-selling musical instruments on Amazon, and the mic I bought. the mic I bought is on there. But uh, it's kind of interesting if you read down the first five or six of them. Mike, 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 Mike. Uh, I've got like what number is it? I'm I'm on one through. I think it was four last time I checked. Okay, a lot of them make sense. Like number one is a guitar tuner. Number two is picks. Number three is headphones. Number four is a digital recorder. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't see your mic on wow. here. The only mic I see on my list it's moved it, off. I guess it's been kicked off. The only mic I see is the blue microphone Yeti <laughs> USB microphone. It was funny though. The other day I looked on here and like above the mic on this list was like suspenders. Like what for? Like dressing in ja- drag and playing jazz or something? <laughs> do people do that? Are there there drag jazz musicians? Well, is that a know, thing? I didn't well, know that was a thing. Big. What was the resurgence of hipsters playing horn music? Ska, ska music. Those guys dressed ska, up yeah. like sixties. You know. Yeah, r- and then r- swing. Swing was big back then. Like people swing. would. There was like a swing revival, and people would swing dance and. Well, go that was and wear speaking like, of. <laughs> Speaking of King Justice. of the Hill, there was there's a there's a Dale Gribble line where he says something like, you know, he's complaining about the decline of Western civilization in some way, and he says, "I blame the internet and the revival of swing music." <laughs> there you go. Yes, it has ruined the world. Um, no, I don't know. Are people still into that? I thought that was like a decade ago. I don't think people do that kind of stuff anymore, except for the the really geeky ones. But who am yeah. I to judge? I'm just talking out my ass. Yeah. Do whatever so, makes you happy. Good golf, good tennis, or whatever makes you happy. Yep. So the the name of this episode is If they love this Billy, if they love the state, they're not really your friends. <laughs> Which is something I picture a mother in the future in Lib Pair telling her young boy child when he comes home from school yes. and compla- complaining that there's a few statists like telling yes, him they need yes. a gov- more government. The statist, I imagine, would be picking on him. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, if they love the state, they're not really your friends. And, you know, yeah. David LeBoy asked us, what do you think about, what do you do about statist friends? And I told him, that, you know, that. And I said, if they want to use the government guns on you by proxy, they really aren't your friends. Get them out of your life. Dump them yeah. like a trip to the toilet. Seriously. <laughs> and I said, you can borrow my mantra. 
Unfriend and block. Unfriend yes. and block. Yes. Unfriend well, and block. In essence, yes, they're advocating for bullying if they're advocating for the state. So yeah, in the school schoolroom playground sense, uh, they are bullies and they are not your real friends. And you don't have to impress them because they're just stinky bullies. But the <laughs> other thing, though, Michael, that I, I worry about that mentality is... You won't um, educate them if you drop them. Yeah, but then again, there is the converse. You could come back and say, "Well, there are some status that you just can't educate." Uh, yeah, I think true. you try. I think but, you try. You know, I mean, I was a proud Democrat five years ago. I was a lazy one, but you know, uh, I think you try. I, I think the way to tell the ones that are um, what- Fien phone. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Check out the new show, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, on Adam Curry's No Agenda Global Radio. Streaming live every Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. East Coast U.S. time. The Freedom Fiends Agenda is Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati's fun and feisty chat about market anarchy, self-defense, real money, the digital police state, activism, DIY media, sex pets, and rock and roll. Call in soon before they get droned. Live studio number 307-215-5171 or via Skype to username kittyfeet1. Listen live at nagradio.com. That's nagradio.com. The Freedom Fiends from freedomfiends.com. A science fiction comic adventure from Big Head Press. Quantum Vibe. It's year 2523. There are colonies on Venus, Mars, and Mercury. People travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed. With brain implants and artificial gravity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum Vibe. There's a robot girl and zany creatures made with genetically engineered features. And corporate villains crave the opportunity to steal a profit from others' ingenuity. A scientific genius and his clever assistant set out on an adventure through the solar system on a secret mission to find the key to access new frontiers and save liberty. Quantum Vibe.com. Bean phone. What's the AA Fiend term? Phone. Constitutionally Fiend incapable phone. of being honest with themselves. Hang on a second there, Fiend Caller. Let me finish this uh, this bit. Um, you know, I think if they like defend the state like they're defending their mother and you said something bad about their mother, then they're not they're not gonna make it. You know? Maybe. I think you gotta play it by ear. Each person's gonna be different and react differently. Um uh, let's come I back to this. We have a point, but we have, we'll come back to it. We yeah. got a caller, yeah. Who's on the phone there, Fiend? Night. Hey, Knight. It's uh, Nima's little brother. How you doing there? What's up? Uh, good. How, how's Speaking the state, of status, Knight had a, yeah, he had a red ribbon week at school. I I usually have problems saying that. I'm surprised it was as clear as it was. I always say red ribbon week, but uh, red ribbon week at at Knight school. Tell us what red ribbon week was. What Knight. grade? First, what grade are you in there at, at school? Knight? I'm I'm in seventh. Seventh grade. All right. Tell us about your week, man. It's good to hear from you. Um, well, I got done playing football. Yeah. No, t- tell, about tell us about Red Ribbon Week, man. Oh, Red Wi- Red Ribbon Week. Okay. I was about yeah. to say Red Ribbon. Yeah, not, not, um, not like I had a piece of toast and I brushed my teeth, but like Red okay, Ribbon Week. Okay, yeah. Um, pretty much it's like a drug-free week and... Where everyone like, stops yeah. dr- taking drugs at school, including <laughs> does that include the teachers drinking, and does that include the kids that that the school shrink puts that on, they Ritalin? Put on Ritalin? Um, yeah, <laughs> they didn't talk about prescription drugs and how that kills anyone. They said that, and they, then- ma- they mainly talked about um, weed and stuff like that. Saying you could become addicted and. There's it's like, <laughs> and it can kill you. There's a picture going around. Wait, Facebook. wait. They said weed could kill you. Did they say that? Yeah, they said that. <laughs> There's a picture wow. going around <laughs> Facebook of like a mother finding her teenage son's corpse with a marijuana pipe in his hand, and it says like, "Stop shooting marijuana. It'll kill you." <laughs> Think of your mother finding your corpse, making fun of that kind of stuff. 
Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, I can't believe they they straight up lie like that. Uh, there is like they've done studies. There's no humanly possible lethal dose on marijuana. I guess everybody who listens to the fiends probably knows that. But yeah, yeah and, I guess there there is they, a lethal dose, but it's like four million joints or something in an yeah. hour, which nobody could physically do. Well, we're going into a break here. Um, let's keep night on and talk to him for the archives, and then uh, okay, take another caller. All right, all right. Good. So hang on there, night. Worms. Worms. Ugh, I'm so sick. Nima, do you have to go do something? Or, uh, no, you can, no okay. we'll, we'll keep recording night yeah. uh, during the break. All right, tell us about it, night. This will go into the archives later. Yeah. All right. Well, pretty much, they had, like, this entire, like, pep rally thing there. And um, at first, they'd, I forgot it was Red Ribbon Week. And, <clears throat> but... I, I thought that they were doing something for breast cancer or something like that because <laughs> usually all the football players have been doing, like, buying the pink socks and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but I can imagine. Yeah, it's a, it's a thing where some people call it pink washing who are critical of it, but uh, <laughs> you haven't you haven't seen that nowadays? Everybody wearing pink in support of breast cancer, and they have they have some clever slogans like save the boobies or protect like the tatas. I like save the boobies, but, uh, um, I don't but they all, wear, the they all wear pink, and supposedly it somehow helps women not get breast cancer. Uh, I don't know what the thinking is behind that, but that's the thinking. Yeah, um, but so, so, I thought so they had a for breast cancer or something, and they Gave, they had like a lottery or something like that, and I got a uh-huh. ticket. And you know, the colors were out wrong when they printed it, <laughs> so it looked pink. And uh. So someone was asking me, "Well, what do you get?" And I'm like, "I don't know, breast cancer." You get and- it. From <laughs> you get breast cancer. <laughs> That's funny. So go on. Um, but they had like this entire play, and they were talking about how, like, this skateboarder, um, he went to school and his mom died from ODing on weed. <laughs> <laughs> Did the kids, I, like, I, write and make the play, or was it, like, a play by adults? No, it wasn't a play. They, they showed a video on, like, a huge screen. Ah, uh, wow. So somebody actually produced a video for it. Where where the mom um, ODs on weed and the kid comes home to his dead mom? That's disgusting. No, no, it wasn't a play. It was I like know. this uh, series called The Natural High. It's like a yeah. channel on YouTube or something. And uh, um, uh. the skateboarder, like he was talking about how drugs like change the way you act. And yeah, well, they do. Stuff like they that. do. That's why you take them. <laughs> they do. That's why you take them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and um. So, pretty much, he said that his mom OD'd on marijuana, and she died. Wow. Wow. Did, I, how, did, how did your fellow classmates react to that? Uh, did they laugh? Did they think it was ridiculous, or, or were they scared? Did it actually work on them? Did the propaganda well, I mean, work? Some, some of them thought the thought that all this was true and but some of them they're with me on like freedom to like consume whatever freedom of ingestion do. Uh, yeah, yeah freedom of uh ingestion uh, ingestion yeah. ingestion and um and then some of them just laughed because they've been hearing this for 12 years pretty much yeah yeah they've heard they've heard all the propaganda before it can't do much else to them well, yeah, they've repeated the same thing over and over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And expected different results. <laughs> the definition yeah. of insanity. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, um, we're back in we're a about second to, here, so. Yeah, we're about to come back. Thanks uh, so much for calling, Knight. Yep. All right. Good having you on, man. Call anytime, Love you, brother. bro. Love you, bro. I'll, I'll call you to have an actual conversation on Monday or Tuesday. I'll talk to the whole fam, okay? He can right. talk. He can talk to you after Tuesday night because we're busy till then. I have him till then. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There you go. Take care, right. man. Peace, peace, bro. All right. Bye. Bye. Worms, worms. Yeah, we know we came in with a phone call on. That's how we do it here on Fiends. I mean, the Fiends is, at this point is, but we're so good at it 
that a good show for us is basically just having the conversations about all the Liberty stuff we're doing anyway, but we're broadcasting <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. We just we just party and bullshit. Yeah, that's all we do. We just drink forties uh, and and yell about the president. <laughs> so yeah, are you stealing yeah. time from the fiends and uh, doing some some work there with uh, Let's see. silver yes, stacks? We've- We've got uh, read it. what you got. Read the notes read out loud, man. No, work in progress. No. Hey, man, we're right. I mean, not the, no, don't progress. read the words. Don't read the words. But, uh, you know, we are a teaching hospital. And, yes, uh, you are. know, Ben Quaker called me today and was like, I called him. But one of the things he was he was complimenting me saying, <laughs> yeah, he was complimenting Usually me. Usually if saying, you're on the phone with somebody, it's because you called Ben. <laughs> me? No, he calls me. Well, he apologized yeah. for not calling me enough, actually. Uh, uh, but Ben Ben Stone from Bad Quaker Podcast was complimenting me and saying that i've done a lot to improve the audio quality of the liberty movement i'm like no just you and he's like no garrett fox and you know someone else and i'm like yeah whatever i mean not i think he's right and i think we we have kind of a reputation for that um we did a favor or i guess i ended up doing a favor for a guy in the liberty movement what was it last week he asked you for an audio favor and you're like i can't do it i'm busy have nima do it um you know where i had to record somebody over the phone uh, because apparently it, it was a well, it was my, a my 91 year old dad was here i would normally drop everything and do something for a friend like that like people often ask me to do and i always do but and he my, probably would have made it happen if i wasn't available but yeah, i was no, there and I you're like have. hey can you do i wouldn't have no. my 91 year old dad came to visit me that doesn't happen often who knows if it's going to happen again i'm mm-hmm. not going to tell mm-hmm. him go sit in the corner while i you know do something for somebody that they should be able to do themselves <laughs> if they read all my blog posts like they should yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't this guy's fault. His part of his gear broke. It, his phone broke, and so hey, that's why I've he got backups. I got backups, man. That's why I'm not selling this USB uh, preamp. Do, do because you really have you have a backup cell phone that that, w- that you could take the SIM card out and replace it and just turn it on and not have to like go to the Verizon store or something. Well, let's see. My wife has a cell phone. I have a cell phone. They have different numbers. So yeah, I have a backup cell phone. I have a landline. Oh, yeah, I wife. have yeah. Skype. Yeah. Uh, you know. I'd I'd go to the neighbors and do it. I mean, like that's yeah. how I am if yeah. I had to do it. But uh, yeah. Well, anyway, know. the point of the story was I was helping this guy out with his audio problem. Um, basically, it was recording a politician, which I don't know why Ew. we were doing it. Apparently, he's an anarchist or a libertarian or he something. Is. I didn't didn't ask questions, but uh, I just did it. Um, and the guy was like, "Hey, you know, you guys do have sort of a reputation for you know." pushing the high audio quality and all that kind of stuff so that's why i wanted to reach out to you guys for this uh even though we were recording some guy talking on his cell phone uh, into my digital audio stuff um but uh, it just sounds decent for what it was fiend you know. phone we never did fiend finish phone. talking about uh fiend phone how about talking to status status friends we, Hi. we will i've had Hello, a caller uh caller you sound like you're falling down a wind tunnel hello, <laughs> hello? Hi, hey, there we go. This is George. Hey, George. Joe Okay. You sound really distorted, and there's a lot of background noise. Is there anything you can do about oh, that? I think, I, I think it's a little uh, bit better now. Background noise. That's rough. Uh, I don't know. Turn da- can you turn down your, um, your mic, your input to your mic? It's really distorted. Okay. Sounds good. Hey, George. Uh, well, we were just talking about the importance of audio quality, so... Um, and you're lacking in it. It hurts my ears. No, I'm kidding. Um, I like <laughs> we like your website. Do you, how do you say it? Uh, Teodesian.net. Yeah. Oh, I just figured I'd call in, say hello, uh, talk to you about the topic today. You know the uh, hey, can friends you, who are, are you on a phone? Are you on a phone or something else? Okay. I think no. It, it, it sounds fine now. I think it sounds, it sounds really. I have, the, I have the treble all the way down on him. Do you have a oh, phone? Okay. Are you calling on Skype with a headset? Uh, I'm calling calling on Skype, and I got a cardioid mic. Okay, move further away from the mic. That's a good start. And we are a teaching hospital, so we'll do this live on the air. All right, cool. Sounds good. Sounds better. What's your background noise? You have a heater on? Uh, My background noise is probably my computer. You know, I'm one of those enthusiasts that builds one that sounds like a freaking jet taking off. So I need to get this (laughs) into another room probably. (laughs) Can you do that? Can you pick the mic up and walk away from it? Yeah, sure. All right, let's try that. See, we're doing, we're, you know, I started out by yelling at him about his audio and now we're showing people how to improve it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How's this doing? Background noise is completely gone. Now move the mic about four inches further from your mouth. Okay. How are we doing now? A little better. What do you think, Nima? 
I think it sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. It sounds so, it sounds sounds better than a cell phone. Uh, it's it's definitely passable. Uh, yep. I think it sounds fine. So so what's on your mind? Oh, the topic about dealing with statist friends. How do you do that? Oh, uh, I just do it uh, probably the same way anybody else does it. It's hit or miss. You know, the uh, thing that I I find a lot coming up when I discuss stuff with statists is. Oh, hey, you know, how, how come you, you keep harping about the government? You know, it's not as if they're coming after you every day, and it's like, are you scared of them or something? And I'm like, well, you know, at, in some level, you know, they're the only ones making death threats to me every day implicitly. But mm-hmm. on they the don't, other they don't level, get that. Can you move a, a few more inches away from the mic, please, and then I'll turn you up. It'll sound better. Yeah, sure. Give me a second here. Okay. How are we doing now? Talk. Talk. Talk, hey, talk. Hello. Hello. All right. That's good. Go ahead. How do you deal with but the friends? Anyways, so the, the other thing that made me think, you know, it's not so much the status I'm scared of. It's the people who believe in it. They really believe in it. You know, well, ben, the ones ben Stone says that the state and the government are different things. And I think that's what you're talking about without using the same terms. The government is, you know, the, the cops and their guns and their badges and their pensions and the judges and the, the politicians and the buildings that's the government but the state is the people and the collective hallucination of the people that allows that to continue like literally um if the government ended tomorrow the state would go on for a little while a few weeks until it was couldn't do anything anymore and if the state ended the government would try to go on for a while but it wouldn't it wouldn't be able to you know if there's no cops willing to pull the guns for the government it there's no government yeah, they right. have you have to chance. end the state first. Uh, if you end the state, the, the whole thing goes away. If you just end the government, the state will end up creating a new government. Yeah, or another when, government will come in and take over. And when we say end the state, we mean end the collective hallucination through education. Well, I could make like a rap, like one of those preachers. <laughs> That's pretty good. Jesse Jackson. The, uh, the other thing I would say that, uh, you know, since it's kind of hard to uh, dissuade them of their beliefs, uh in the end, a lot of what I do is just I try to ask questions that are somewhat incendiary. I don't know. May, maybe it's just because I don't particularly care if I piss them off. I think but. that's called Macho Libertarian Flash, and it's one of our favorite topics. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the one that, that I, I happened upon pretty recently that I liked was uh, if you showed the same amount of submissiveness to your church and your religion as you did to the state, would people think you were a cult member? I really get some fun reactions out of that one. I'd rather people do it to their church because the church, that's voluntary. And, uh, you know, without the government backing, the church has no power. They used to because, you know, 400 years ago because they were the state pretty much. But, uh, you know, I I don't care if someone believes in imaginary friends and talks to (laughs) imaginary things. I'm not saying there's no God. I'm just saying, like... uh, I don't think they well, do. Well, I, right. I really, I really <laughs> like the point though to bring up how cultish it is to believe in the state and be one of these mainstream people, a statist, a yeah. voter, a left-right person. Um, it, it, sometimes they say that about libertarians and anarchists. You know, oh, we're cult-like. But uh, Tom Wood sort of takes them down a peg and says, "Oh, really? We're the cult-like ones. You guys are the ones who sing anthems and have pictures of the past leaders and uh, praise it all the time and have an oath that you take <laughs> every morning." Yeah, yeah, it really. Not an oath, a, pl- a pledge. A pl- well a, it's not even Santa an oath. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. At least Santa Claus brings you brings you gifts without stealing anything. He makes them out of magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, man. Um, thanks for calling in. You got anything else? No, man. It's cool. Thanks for uh, letting me talk to you. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Appreciate it. All right. Bye. So Nima, so you, you got anything more on this topic <laughs> of? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I've been. Um, oh, damn it! <laughs> Let's keep going. I'm never gonna we'll get keep, to tell the story. We'll keep recording. No, no. We'll we'll come back after the break. Oh shit! We'll come back after we sell things. <laughs> oh no! I said break. Let me say shit to cover it up. <laughs> That's not worse. I'm gonna cover up the break with some shit. They say break on TV all the time, man. NBC all the time. And after the break, worms, worms. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am 
am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah. Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh. Freedom Fiends to the rescue. The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it. You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says Buttons. Worms. Worms, worms. Worms, worms, So you stealing time from the fiends there to work on your hip-hop career, Nima? No, it was the break. It's not time from the fiends. I'm stealing time from listening to Ian's ads. No, you're, t- you're stealing time from the fiends to go work on hip-hop that has nothing to do with the fiends or liberty. Well, what, what do you want me to do? <laughs> it has everything to do with the fiends. I know. And everything to do with liberty. So and, it was my I- and it was my idea. Yeah, it was just, your idea. You're the one... You're the one calling us saying hey work on this work on this work on this yeah i'm which totally good, kidding I'm, I'm totally kidding saying you're stealing time from yep. the fiends yep. uh, if you weren't doing that on the break i'd be mad at you yes, i'd be micromanaging yes. you i call it being proactive but it's uh <laughs> some some call it micromanaging <laughs> potato potato right yeah so anyway back to yeah. statist friends uh yeah. so um at my job you know i'm newish there it's been about two weeks and um I was talking to a, uh, one of my friends there, uh, you know, he's a newer friend, an acquaintance at first, um, but I, I kind of like the guy immediately, he's a tall, half Indian guy, um, he's funny, you know, He his first opener to me was, uh, oh wow, you have an epic beard, and I was like, okay, somebody compliments my beard, we're going to be friends, uh, and... and the first day, you know, we were talking about what we did. You know, I was saying, oh, yeah, it was in TV, and then I hated it, and then I did, you know, tech support, and now I'm going to do my own. I'm doing my own thing with this podcast, and it's great, but I need a little extra money to buy more gear. And he was like, oh, I want to be a, a cop. And I was like, what? Uh? <laughs> what? And I was like, I was like, I was, I think what I said was, um, oh, I'll convince you otherwise. And he was like, he, he like looked at me quizzically, like his head tilted to the side, like, uh? I'm like, yeah, you don't want to be a cop. <laughs> and uh, so we've been having this sort of ongoing conversation about it. Um, I went through the the other thing, uh, or the other day, we were talking about it, and I, I just went through the whole thing. Like, you know, in, in the end, it's submit or get shot. Uh, because I was saying, well, you know, cops, the main thing, even if you say, make the argument that they're doing good things, they're getting paid through theft. All of their paycheck is stolen money. So basically, you being a cop makes you a thief. And he was like, no, I don't think so. How, how do you figure? <laughs> and so I went through the whole thing. Like, well, if you don't pay your taxes, they, what happens? And he says, well, they, they audit you. And I'm like, no, they audit you. What do they do if you do, refuse to talk to them and still refuse to pay them? He's like, well, they send people to your house. I'm like, yeah, exactly. And I was like, well, what happens if you refuse to go to jail? And he's like, well, they'll take you to jail. And I'm like, well, what if you just sit there and say, I, I don't believe in your authority. I'm not going to jail. He was like, well, I'm like, well, they shoot you, <laughs> you know, eventually they shoot you. If you continue and continue and continue to refuse or if you fight back, that's their last recourse. But Nima, uh, there's like, a social contract. <sighs> he didn't even go that far. He, he, something sort of clicked in him and he was like, huh? And I was like, I, I said, basically, cool. it, your choice is you submit or you get shot. And it, in that slogified, sloganified version, slogified. he was like, yeah, I guess you're right. You submit or you get shot. Where do you know? Um, and, and where do I sign up? Well, where do uh <laughs> Where do you know this cat from? From from uh, my part time job, uh, uh, delivering pizzas. He's a, he's a fellow uh, delivery driver. Uh. Um, and 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 you know, I also went on the whole thing about taxes and how you know, because that was that was the, what we started with first. I was like, he was like, well, how do you figure everything the government does is bad or, or all governments bad? And 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 and, and he, go, I said, well, the state, you know, yada yada yada. And he goes, but we're the state. We are the state. What do you mean, the government? <laughs> and I said, I said, well, yeah, you know, in in a sense, but we're not the ones who control it. I said, um, you know, do you, if you're the state, you, right? You're, that's your argument. You're part of the state. Um, do you want to kill? fellow brown people in other countries do you want to incinerate little babies and he's like no no that's awful uh, 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 but but you know i was like well you're paying for it do you want to pay for it and he's like no and i'm like well you have to 
you know, or, or you have to submit to, to paying for that or you, you get shot, right? Um, so we went on that. And then the other day, I think it was yesterday. No, it was, it was payday, right? So we get our checks. Um, and he looked just downtrodden all day. And I was like, um, what's wrong, man? You okay? And he's, he's like, oh, it's just the government. And I thought maybe he was joking because he's kind of a, a, a trickster and a jokester. Um, and, and but he didn't really smile. And I was like, oh, oh, what? Did you see your paycheck or something? And he's like, yeah, I can't believe they took out Who's all that money. Who's this FICA bastard? FICA. Yeah. Who's he? Yeah, he's like, he's like, he's like, why do I need to pay for for this social security? I I don't get social security benefits. You know, I was watching one of those shows today where they show like people falling off their skateboards and racking their balls and like trying to break beer bottles on their head and it not working and stuff like that and, <laughs> and then like danny bonaducci comments on it and things like that people like oh, I, um, I hate those kind of shows on yeah. true tv <laughs> just i i hate them because the commentators are always so statist but i was and watching I, like I, I was watching all these yeah they are but i was watching all these like 18 year olds do incredibly dangerous and stupid shit and thinking mm -hmm. like, okay, so starting next year, I'm going to be paying their health insurance, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So but, good um, for you. Good for you on talking to your statist friend and putting up well, with him. And the, the thing is, it, it, it's a wonderful thing to see the light bulbs go off. And, and you know, I asked him because I think he, this may be, have been his first check that he looked at because he's a young cat. I think he might be a freshman or early, early in college. And... Um, I think it might have been the first check he looked at and saw the chunks of money the government takes out because he says he's done like freelance work like he goes and does photography and stuff and he's a, he's a really good photographer too um, but usually with those kinds of things in smaller gigs you just get paid cash and you don't really take your taxes out you know you just get they, they give you money they want I'm not you saying to. he's not saying he's doing anything illegal I'm just saying that's that's well, a he's lot doing of something work. illegal and he's going to be a cop so there's a dichotomy. <laughs> he's good. He, he could be called to arrest someone and put a gun to their head for what he's doing, for what he's been doing. Well, I'm not saying he's been, that, well, I'm not trying to out him is what I'm saying. Well, I'm no saying, one knows I don't, where, you, I don't no know one knows if, that's, where you, if that's how his thing is. No one knows where you work. That, yeah. Fair you enough. haven't said what but, company. Fair enough. But but the impression I got was that's the first time he's seen it in writing, um, because that that to me is so sickening too. And how do people not look at? I guess maybe that's why the government loves cashless and and direct deposit and all that. Um, because when you sit there and look at your check and you just see d the deductions the state takes out, I don't know how you don't get angry. Yeah, when and you do, <laughs> when you see Ron Swanson come in and eat a third of your sandwich. Yeah, when he eats when he eats uh, most of your lunch and sits there and looks at you and says, "That's taxes." Yeah, that that's exactly how it is. They sit there and show it to you. Um, and the the thing is too, uh, me and him are we make most of our money off of uh, you know tips and the cash ones don't get automatically reported uh so a lot of our, our money you know we just get um but i told him wait till you get like an office job like wait till you graduate and you, you work 40 hours a week doing you know and all your money gets reported to the government and they take it out then you uh, in fact i wrote a song about that that was one of my earlier rap songs was uh, i forget the line but it was basically about how yeah now that i'm in a proper job I, I realize just how much money they take out because it is a big chunk. Um, and it I don't see how people look at that and don't go, wow, why do I support this system? What am I getting out of this? What benefits? I, I guess the status in their head go, well, those are the roads. <laughs> you know, I, I got to drive. Roads. But, but that's a pretty steep price, I feel like. The, the amount of taxes we pay is a pretty steep price for what we get. I, I think we could probably do better if there was competition involved. Let's quit talking about the government. I don't, oh, yeah. I don't, I don't even care that there's an election coming up. It's uh, We'll put yeah, it all yeah, in the too. wrap. It's all in the I wrap, like, man. Well, well, yeah, part of the wrap is, you know, you wanted to have it come out before the election. I was like, whoa, election? <laughs> is it you that forgot. soon? You forgot. Jesus. It's a week I did, from I Tuesday. Well, I, I, knew there was, I knew they were running and campaigning and everything, but I didn't realize, I know, hey, it wow, did come it's up like soon. in a week. And I only know it's a week from the election, and I am pacing back and forth like a manic street preacher. You should cry, try it, man. It's freeing. I like it. I want so, to, but uh, I'm using a ribbon mic. It's too much proximity effect. Here, yeah, let's do well, a test. I'm going to walk back and forth and talk. And just see oh, how horrible it'll make a lot of noise. Yeah. Check, check. Yeah. Hey. I'm talking. No. I'm far away from the mic. Can you hear me? No. Oh, well, you could take the ribbon mic off its stand, but uh, I could yeah. do that. So, um, but it's it's going to have a lot. It's going to have a lot of handheld noise too. So anyway, uh, I only know the election is a week from Tuesday because we have a video, a song, and video we want to finish 
uh, Obama's Feet Stank featuring Rich Black, DJ, what are you? Your MC DJ, Library. Uh, MC Library, a.k.a. Nima V. But and we, we figured and the library is pretty awesome because the double entendre of Barry, you know, Barack Obama is also called Barry. Yeah. Yes. It was and Barry. he's a liar. B-E-R-R-Y, but we noticed it at the same time and changed it because great minds think alike. So, yes. Library. He's a liar and library. his feet stink. And uh, I'm, my name on this is... Uh, is canonic can, caniacal the scribe the scribe it sounds yes. mystical i like it so Scribbles. read read the thing i just pitched to you it's the weirdest pigeon, comment pigeon, pigeon. i've ever gotten on youtube that i can't tell if it's an insult a death threat a praise all of the above none of the above you read it it's so weird oh, man yeah. it was on one of the uh, freedom fiends uh you know uploaded to to youtube okay here here is the comment kitty feet with the mic fetish remember blocking this channel soon after subscribing question mark just because i wasn't kissing seffy bottom he did diagnose you as having mental illness brought on my childhood trauma for liking a bit of kink remember swingo bang bang still got all your guns i hope so i do love going against an armed man with nothing but a bald guy's feet worms dude worms that is the language you like isn't it fellas Let's have a party at Steph's place tonight. Or later. <laughs> He's talking about stuff on Molyneux, man. Uh, yeah, I it's figured. It's so weird. It's so weird. That, that is a weird comment. Uh, the weird thing well, about well, the internet, the bad thing about well, the internet... Oh, man, we'll, we'll he interrupted talk about it more me. Soon, he interrupted soon. me. Talk I didn't get it in. I could have got it in. Worms. That's how we like talking, isn't it? Apparently, we like saying worms. That That's what you like to do wasn't if you a, fellas want to. Wasn't that a weird, a weird comment? On the yeah, YouTubes. but um, I think it was friendly. I don't think it was mean. I think it's like uh, just joshing you, buddy. Like, ah, worms, dude, worms. That's the language you like, isn't it, fellas? Well, he did say I'd blocked him, but I don't have him blocked on uh, YouTube, so I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, maybe, oh, maybe I blocked him with my other profile, because that was actually posted on uh, my yeah, old profile where I put up a couple of the Freedom Fiends ones. Just because I wasn't kissing Steffi Bottom. Yeah, that's Kitty Feet sixty nine is my YouTube mm. channel one for that, and my new one is Right Arm of Wyoming. Mm. Mm. What's so, Swingo yeah. Bang Bang? I have no idea. Having sex? I don't know. Hmm. Mm. Still got all your guns. I hope so. That's kind of an odd thing to say too. Yeah, that was. Well, I that hope was the you. Part I that hope made, you've got your that, guns. That was the part that made me feel. Not threatened, but that maybe it was threatening, you know? Yeah, yeah. Odd comment. If you're listening and you made the comment, call in. We're curious. Or don't. Well, are we feeding the trolls by discussing this? But you Fiend like to feed phone. the trolls as art. Fiend phone. Oh. There he is. Fiend phone. Fiend phone. Hey, Fiend, what's your name? You're on the air. I did not make that comment. <laughs> <laughs> I know who that is. <laughs> who is that? It's uh, everyone's catching up because I had uh, my family on for two hours last week. So uh, uh, my turn. It's your mama. Hey, it's your mama. I went and voted. I'm sorry. Can we ask who you voted for? I actually was able to write in nobody. Really? For president. <laughs> okay. <laughs> expect a knock on your door. <laughs> Why? I'm kidding. <laughs> That's awesome. You wrote I nobody, and and you did it on an electronic machine too. Not <laughs> not. You didn't write it on a piece of paper? It'll change it to Romney. <laughs> no, it won't. I voted for it, nobody. That's who I want. It'll it'll just it'll just go down the memory hole. You know, yeah, if that's everybody who I want if everybody voted for nobody, you know, most people voted for nobody, they wouldn't have nobody. They'd go to the next guy on the list, probably. If they're even that honest, you know. Well, yeah. Yeah, true. but we would all know. But if everybody good. voted for that's nobody, we would all just stop paying our taxes <laughs> at the same time and then Screw it. They would, they then, would die. And the, then the nobody, parasite would, exactly. would die of starvation. But you know what? Nobody you know, would come get you. Talk, talking about, you know, status and status friends, it, it, the more I thought about, well, the choice, of course, is there's no good choice. But I have, uh, you know, I think of morals and ethics a lot. And when it comes right down to it, you're right as far as like taxes too. It goes to pay for these drones that go and kill innocent kids. And and you have to realize that to me, I believe in karma, that comes back to you. If you're voting for someone that's doing that or going to do mm. that, then that comes mm. back on yourself. See, I like that. You're, you, you, you say that there, there are consequences, which I think, although I think that uh, 
I'm not that big of a believer in karma. And I think the consequences are going to come in the form of um, Nuremberg trials for the drug warriors. Well, yeah. I think the consequence, uh, the the most visible consequence is that you enable the state to continue to exist. So the consequences right. are, uh, you know, more of your money gets taken. Uh, you're going to get more tickets. You're going to have more cameras watching you. Uh, you're going to have a whole host of other horrible consequences. Right. Uh, because just because you decided to make your voice heard and vote. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, um... Have you heard about uh, Frank, your brother, and his harassment? Uh, you were telling me a little bit about it. Yeah, it sounds pretty horrible. <laughs> okay. They they sent him a notice because previously his license was suspended. And during that time, I remember his girlfriend coming and picking him up and taking him to work. But he received a letter this week saying that... Um, his uh, Texas driver license will be suspended for an additional period because they have determined that he drove during that time. How the hell did they determine yeah. something like that? Exactly. That's why I'm like, how, how did they do that? Well, I was wondering if it could be the cameras, but then again, I don't know if the cameras, do they have that high of a resolution to determine who's driving the car? I thought they would just get a picture of the car and the license plate. I mean... Couldn't he go in and argue, hey, it wasn't me driving. Just because my car was on the road doesn't mean I was behind the wheel. Right. Well, he wasn't ever stopped or given a ticket or anything. So, yeah. but, Although yeah, it's Frank, a, so, so that, that's, that you know of. Frank could have gotten stopped and gotten a ticket and didn't tell you. That's theoretically possible. No. Yeah. That's no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he usually puts it on Facebook, so then I know. <laughs> right, right. Because you're always trolling our social media, like a good mother does. What? Well, yeah, I gotta know what my kids are doing. <laughs> I have my Mom. entire family blocked on Facebook. <laughs> That's mean. <laughs> nah, I love them. I just, I don't want to. You know, you've seen the video, the mom filter for Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> well. I, I love my mom and, um, you know, I don't mind her keeping tags on Facebook because I'm not stupid about Facebook and I only put things on Facebook that I would be comfortable with the general public knowing anyway. Nima, you know? let me ask I you this. Like it, Nima, you said you never uh -huh. checked the little red dots at the top. Does that mean every time I tag you in a post, I'm wasting my typing breath? <laughs> Does it? We're not saying the freedom fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation. But it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. Nima, are you there? Hello, Nima. Uh oh, we lost him. We lost Nima. That's weird. I don't oh, know. No. All right. Well, you you tell us what's going on there, L from the South. I don't know. It just seems crazy. And another reason I wanted to vote was we had a Proposition Five uh, to get rid of all the red light cameras. Yeah. Uh, apparently, there's a big controversy that the our city, our little city of League City, has made five million dollars in profits from sending out red light tickets, which is quite a bit. But they also have used that money to buy software, and I don't know how it works. I, I just read some of it today, but software to where they can better uh, keep tabs on the internet in our area and our emails and. Or internet usage. That's horrible. Okay. I'm I'm back. Yeah. Sorry, what guys. What happened, Nima? Spe 
Were you still in time Speaking for the internet to work on your hip hop career? No, it's freaking Lenovo. Bad design, guys. Bad design. On the front of my laptop, there's a tiny little switch that turns on or off your wireless card. So I was talking with my hands, <laughs> as I often do, and my hand f apparently flicked this tiny little switch and turned off my internet. Oh, it's not it's Ridiculous. not the computer. It's it's the Italian in your blood that you got from your mom. It <laughs> makes you speak with, with your hands. Yeah, yeah. I talk with my hands. See, it's the whole that whole old world region in general, because because Iranians talk with their hands a lot too. <laughs> That's right. It runs across races. <laughs> yes. It does. It does. Um, so do you, so, apparently, Lisa. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Oh! <laughs> do what? <laughs> you can repeat that, Nima. Uh, no, we'll, that we'll leave that it. One. Uh, okay, good. That, it's, it's for the better. <laughs> we got to tell her. We got to tell her. We don't want to go back and listen to it and go, ah, if she I wants will. to react, she can. <laughs> you said they run, it goes across races. And I said, so do you, apparently, Lisa, because Nima's here. <laughs> well, that was my goal at an earlier age. Really? But no, it wasn't. Well, well, <laughs> didn't you want to make your dad angry because he was kind of racist back then? Well, I could never oh. understand his racism, and and yes, your grandfather was very racist. Was is the key term. So it's a good thing he's changed his ways. Well, but now that, that, that he's got now that he's got black grandchildren and Hispanic right. grandchildren, it kind of makes it hard to be racist, doesn't it? Nima right. Nima has a sand fro. We decided that he has a sand fro. <laughs> I don't can grow one. Hair. Hey, let's quit talking about hair. Nima's race and making fun yeah. of him. Let's talk about dirty movies. I rented this movie called Emmanuel. Have either of you ever seen it? Wait, uh -uh. are you saying you want to talk about porno with my mom? Well, Emmanuel <laughs> was what a... What the hell, man? Emmanuel was... Well, it's on my show notes. and We're getting... You know, we got a little time left, but I really wanted to get to Emmanuel. <laughs> Emmanuel was a 1974 French, like, big budget cinema. It was the first movie that was, like, majorly distributed through theaters throughout the world that had explicit sex. And it's basically a softcore, really high quality porno. And the lady who was the actress in it died recently, so it's been in the news a lot. And I was like, I've never seen that. I got it and watched about half of it and went. Yeah, this is too tame. I kind of like the, yeah. the the play rape scene between the house boy and the house girl, but uh, the wow. main sex and it's really like soft focus, gentle, beautiful, weird. You know. All right, hang on a so, sec. We'll keep you on, mom. Movie. Mom, what do you think about the sex in that movie? We're gonna keep you on for the archives <laughs> here. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie. Yeah, we're gonna keep you on for the archives and talk about dirty movies here. I remember, I remember Emmanuel in space. Was that a sequel? There was a softcore porn on uh, Showtime. It was probably that I used to a watch when I was thirteen. Yeah, yeah. What kind of porn yeah. do you like, there, ma'am? Me? Yeah. Uh, I like Ann Rice books. Ah, okay, good. Let's stay in the literary who's, vein. Who's that? Who's Ann Rice? Ann Rice. Right. Rampling. She also writes under something Rampling. Yeah, she did the interview did she, with did the vampire. Did she do interview with the vampire? She, she, oh, okay. she started all the vampire crap that's big now. She was the first one to be big <laughs> well, with that back in the day. Do you, do you like the whole on, Fifty Shades uh, of Grey stuff, Mom? Sleeping Beauty. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Nima asked if you if you read Fifty Shades of Grey. No, but I've like, heard a lot of talk about that. I, I haven't like, gotten that book. I think no. it's like Oprah erotica or something. Not uh, Not about Oprah, but her kind of you know book club erotica. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it, apparently it's pretty raunchy. Like there was some reviewer on Amazon who re described himself as a retired uh, old man, and he said uh, that the, the main character. I've retired the, the, from being an old man. Yes, he's not no longer an old man. Uh, he said the main character has so many orgasms that it gave him arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard. I I came up with a line one time. It was the sex was so good, even the neighbors had a cigarette. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I heard a good um, line. It's kind of off the subject, but it, it kind of made. I me think laugh. we're fine with getting off the subject at this point. Okay. Well, I heard a lady on TV, and she, uh, and I usually don't like TV, but I was watching some show anyway. She was saying uh, someone was asking her something about, well, when did you realize this? And she said, well, it hit me. It hit me like Chris Rock, not Chris Rock, Chris uh, Brown. <laughs> and I thought, that is so bad. It hit me like Chris Brown. Yeah, Bobby Brown would also work in that situation. Explain who those people are for our listeners, Nima. 
<laughs> I don't really uh, know, but I'm pretending I do. I laughed. Chris Brown, he's an R&B singer. Um, singer. It was Rihanna he was dating at the time, right? And oh, he, he smacked her around. Her. Yeah, yeah. 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 See, I laughed just because I was nervous because I'm like, did I really bring up porn to your mom? I feel bad now. <laughs> Which I'm surprised D- Jay-Z didn't shoot Chris Brown for that because Jay-Z apparently had an affair with Rihanna too. I don't know. I'm not big on oh, the wow. celebrity gossip, but that's, yeah. I don't know. I could be yeah. wrong. But I thought that was a good thing to say. Like when people finally realized about the government and stuff, they could say. It, it hey, hit I, me I, like Chris Brown. <laughs> when I realized it, it hit me like Chris Brown. Yeah, you know? that's funny. That's funny. Uh, or it hit me like a hellfire missile. <laughs> yeah. Or Ouch. Drone, yeah. Something. yeah. <laughs> Don't drone me, bro. Good yeah. Times. Drones times. are getting big in Texas. Big time. Um, Ted Poe. Uh, Nima, you had a run in with Ted Poe, didn't you? Didn't you? When you were little? Um, did I? Maybe. It was ha- Halloween. You don't remember that Halloween? What happened? When the police knocked on my door. What did that have to do with Ted Poe, though? Oh, was he my judge? <laughs> yeah, oh. He was your judge. Oh, then yeah, then yeah. Uh, I still have okay. the ticket and paperwork. Should I put <laughs> Ted? I'm working on the show notes. Should I put Ted Poe? Is that something people will care about and search and find? Well, Mom says he's like a congressman now or something. He used to be a yeah, judge. He, and uh, I did something yeah. fairly heinous one Halloween. It's it's Halloween-ish. We, we could tell the story. I'll say yeah. Ted Poe po Ted po po messing po. with Nemo. That'll, I think we're about on here. Let's check and see. Okay. We'll keep going. We'll, 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 we'll keep essays. Mom on, and we'll just and continue booklet. the conversation yeah. into the break. Let's go ahead and just pause for a little bit so we, we can get the, the comeback correct. I'm so, putting in the show uh, notes, Ted Poe messing with Nemo. Okay. <laughs> and Lincoln. So just Facebook hold on page. the line, Mom. Watch the we'll be back in okay. just a bit. Cam and I think we got like nine seconds left. At cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. All right. Yeah. And if listening to uh, Michael ask my mom about her porno preferences wasn't enough to get you to stop listening, well, you're gonna uh, now to go, my mom you're is going to, to tell embarrassing stories about gonna, me. You're going to have to go back and listen to the uh, archives of this episode if you want to hear yes, yes. Nima's mom's you, answer about my question asking Nima's mom about what kind of porn she likes. Right. We've got a built-in tease. That's good yeah. media, Michael. Good go. job. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, mom was oh, talking hey, about drones. Andre, Andre's calling. Can we take this? Oh, he's calling. Sure. On the, yeah. Okay. okay. We got to yeah, take okay. this. We've been trying to get him on. We got to go. Love you, okay. mom. Love Bye. you, mom. Bye. Yo, Andre. Hey, what's going on? We just hung up on Nima's mom to take your call. That's how, how much we like you. <laughs> <laughs> well, literally, I, I got her off the phone so quick. It was rude. <laughs> You know, I'm, yeah, I'm thanks for being rude to my mom, like Michael. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm so much about the art, and you're you're uh, you're rich black silver stacks that we're doing this rap song with, and we're having a hard time getting it out the door and getting it up there by Tuesday before you get wiped off the map with a hurricane. And you know, I don't care about humans; I care about art. But I'll tell you this: I was watching the news and the weather report right before the show started, and I was like, right. you know, my whole family's on the eastern seaboard, like in Virginia, New York. Uh, Florida, and I'm like, I don't care about that. When's it hit New Jersey? Because that affects when we get these files from Andre. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, man. Uh, DARPA think, uh, is Monday trying to stop the video from being made. What's that, Andre? I think uh, Monday at 2 a.m. Monday at 2 a.m. Oh, like Tuesday morning, you mean, or Monday morning? Like Sunday night? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I thought it was Monday at 8.30 p.m. when the high tide hits, too. Or no, Tuesday was what I heard, New Jersey. I'm not sure. The last the last thing I looked at, I mean, I know it constantly changes, but the last thing I looked at, I'm pretty sure it's at, uh, around Monday at 2 a.m. So, I'm, I mean, it's probably different now, but um, I don't know. I, I feel like it's not really that serious. Like, there's okay. just been so much hype when it comes to storms. I know, I know, like, I know, but you're saying that, but they're like, they're upgrading it from the worst storm in 100 years to the worst storm in 250 years. And I know last year they said it was going to be horrible. That sells ratings, wasn't. though. That's why they, okay, they say things right, like right. that, man. They just want you to keep yeah, tuning and in. And they just care they s- about um, New York and, you know, anything that, that even looks like it's, you know, like a gust of wind might touch New York or D.C., they go crazy. <laughs> Is it windy yeah. there? Right now in New Jersey, um, it's it's a little windy, but you know it's it's normal. I was surprised to see that it's already raining, but um, yeah, you know the the wind is is uh, picking up some, but nothing nothing crazy yet. So we're let's spend the last like forty minutes of this cast just doing a uh, a, sh- a meeting with you, because that's how we do it on the <laughs> okay. fiends. 
let's go ahead and talk about the process talk about where you guys are at what we're going to do what we need from you what you need from us and when let's let me well, mic, let me micromanage you on the air live <laughs> That, that is what we do at the so hung up on that. No, I just, I call it being proactive. You said I was micromanaging and I, I, I'm, I'm taking that as my torch. Like, you know, call me the N word. I'm an N word, man. Call me a micromanager. I'm a proud micromanager, you know? I, no, okay. I'm, <laughs> I mean, when I said it, I didn't mean that as a good thing. Like, <laughs> I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. So anyway, so have you and Nima got the third verse written yet? We're about halfway through it right now. Okay, you're halfway through the third verse right now. All right. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> like, do you want to not do this on, on the air? You want to talk about something else? Am I embarrassing you or putting you on the spot here? That's how we do it. Oh, on me? Feeds. Yeah. Oh, I have to be embarrassed about No, this is fine. Yeah. All right. So, um, <laughs> so we loved your verse. I loved your verse. I didn't hear about Nima, but I'm sure he did. Did you love it, Nima? Yes, I yeah. did. I it was did. great. I thought it was awesome. It was real. I like... And he, you had to do it late at night to not bug your neighbors, which kind of made it had a cooler, like kind of, kind of down tempo kind of feel, you know. Well, it kind of felt like, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. I was trying to force it out to, to compensate for having to be a little quieter. Yeah, yep. yeah, yep. He was worried about it not being hype enough, but I was like, nah. It sounds like you know you're in control of it, like you understand what's going on. It sounded kind of southern hip hop too. You know, you're, you're like as cool as the other side of the pillow. You're like, yeah, <laughs> fuck these guys. And then Nima comes in and he's the like angry Middle Eastern screaming yes. second verse. Yes, <laughs> I am. I'm like, oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> Obama wants to kill my grandpa. Obama wants to kill my grandpa. So does Romney. <laughs> Man, we're fucking horrible. Yeah, yeah, we're racist. Yeah, yeah. I'm the, I'm I'm the only guy that can be racist. Only white people can be racist. <laughs> um, they say. I don't know how many how many black people you know then because I I it's my belief that black people are the most racist people on the planet. <laughs> so, <laughs> really, I mean, really. Uh, black people Why? are so racist they don't even like each other. So I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm I'm sure Michael was being sarcastic. Yeah, every, every, anybody and everybody no, can be racist. <laughs> well, actually, the but the quote, "Black people can't be racist." I think it was Jesse Jackson who said that, or Did he really, <laughs> or the other one. And that sounds racist. Who's the other it's, one? It, it's oh, it's funny other, because uh, yeah, it's, that, that statement pimp, is racist. Uh, Al Sharpton. Yeah, yeah. The perm you know, pimp. you know, there's a video on YouTube. <laughs> there's a Yeti video on YouTube of my friend. Uh, who does uh, Rev, uh, Pastor Ken Blanchard, who does a podcast called Black Man with a Gun. He's basically like a small government libertarian gun nut guy. And he went right. on Al Sharpton's TV show to debate him about guns. You know, Al Sharpton's like, only the police and military should have them. And like this, this, <laughs> this other black preacher friend of mine went on there and like bitched at him about it. It was pretty funny. Right. Yep. I'd love to see that. Yeah. That good for him. I'll find yeah. it. I'll find it. There, yeah, we should put that in the show notes. That sounds like yeah. something people would want to watch. Yeah. Yeah. So how well, yeah, uh, uh, were we going to put Ken Blanchard in the Guns and Weed movie, or did he actually – I don't remember. Well, he did works we for the government. That? I don't know if he can uh, – his day job is working for the government, so I don't know if he can do that. But I asked him, and he couldn't do it for some reason. Oh, that was it. Yeah, there was something yeah. about him. Yeah. Yeah. Fair so, um, Andre, how far are you from the ocean from what's coming tomorrow? <laughs> Um, about an hour and a half away. Aren't you going to be so, riding? You know, a, you're, aren't you going to be riding a bicycle at some point tomorrow when the storm's hitting? Uh, yeah, most likely. Um, so I just I just take my my bike to work because it's only a couple miles away. So I figure I might as well just do that. Um, but do you I mean, think the I'm, hurricane is revenge you know, for Snooky? Winter. Revenge for Snooky. God is punishing <laughs> is, New Jersey is, for is Jersey God punishing Shore. New Jersey for Snooky. <laughs> And you know, the, I, I, I fucking hate uh, Jersey Shore so much because people from out of state hey, come here and it's they not, really it's not think just, that we're all like that. It's not just you, man. <laughs> I was talking to a guy, an Italian guy from Italy the other day online. He's a friend, a fan of my books. And, and he's like, yeah, everybody thinks Jersey Shore is us. You know, they blame us for Jersey Shore. And I've never been to America because we're Italian. They blame, they, us. They blame <laughs> Italians. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, I look people like like their heads are popping because I I don't, I don't know anybody. I've ne I've lived in Jersey my pretty much my entire life. I've never met anybody remotely like that, and I, I've spent a lot of time down at the shore. And I've never I've never met that type of person, but um, all of a sudden they represent all of Jersey. 
<laughs> Which is bad enough because Jersey already gets a bad rap for uh, you know people from New York saying that New Jersey stink, but you know whatever, fuck them. <laughs> New Jersey's feet stink. Well, I was you know because when you're driving by in the uh, on the turnpike, there's a bunch of factories on the way to New York. So, and I guess they're in New Jersey somewhere, and they're just pumping just shit smell out into the highway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know how that works. I I grew up near Pasadena and Baytown in the Houston Ship Channel, and you drive by it, and it's like this essence of stank that just pours into your car through the air conditioner. And so I know how it is living by something like that, but it's not your fault, right? It's not not Jersey's fault. <laughs> nah. All right. Uh, we'll be back soon. We got to go sell some things. You got time to stay on here? Andre? Um, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. All right, cool. Stay on. Hang on a sec. We're going into break. Yo, Freedom Fiends, yep. we're, we're back on here. And yeah, uh, back. on the phone, we cut. got Andre Silver Stacks, a.k.a. Rich Yo. Black. What's up, man? Good. Ellen. Yeah, Ellen. The president dances <laughs> like Ellen. Is that Ellen DeGeneres? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's. I yeah, think that's yeah, what he meant. You see that clip of uh of him on the on the uh, Ellen show? And he comes out and he starts dancing like uh, somebody that had a uh, reconstructive hip surgery. <laughs> <laughs> How does Ellen dance? I, you know, I knew that was a reference to a pop culture thing, but I try not to pay attention, so I didn't know exactly what it was. How does Ellen dance? Horribly, <laughs> like, a yeah, like, like a short haired lesbian with like, a talk show, like a white lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of dancing, speaking of dancing, okay, I got an idea for the video. I think um, I'd love it if you and Nima. In addition to filming your raps, both fil- in addition to filming your raps, if you would both um, film yourself dancing to it, uh, and it, it's, it sounds kind of cheesy, but I think it'd be cool, to, like put in filling spaces, like dude, dance to just kind of like I don't give a fuck, dance like really good dancing, but just like I'm dancing at you, motherfucker. I don't even care. I'm not even. Lo- I'm not even gonna look into the camera during this part. I'm gonna fucking dance at you. What do you think of that? Nima likes it. I, I'm I'm down just because I'm always down to act and act a fool on camera. <laughs> it's kind of my yeah. thing. So so I'm down. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's cool. I'm not really the dancing type, but I think it would be funny though. Anyway, well, it would be yeah, it would be work funny, really yeah. well if you're really good or really bad. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, we're having a we're yeah. having a we're having a production meeting. I'm, I'm gonna put that in the show. Notes. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be YouTubing videos of how to Dougie in the meantime. <laughs> so I, I, I can Dougie during it. Just make up a uh, dance called the Stank Foot. The, the, stank, <laughs> the stank Foot. foot. That's really Dude, good. Okay, that's, that's really how to make good. it go viral. Yeah. We got to have a dance. We got to have to, and, and I'll put it on the screen. It'll say, <laughs> "Do the Stank Foot." I think you All should. Right. If you can, can you can you hold? Can you be on one? Can you both be on one foot and hold your other foot? up near your face and smell it and then make an ugly face. <laughs> I don't know if I'm that flexible. I don't think I'm yeah, that flexible. Yeah, what about the Pink Ranger? I'm not well, Pink Ranger. You could, you, how about if you had someone else off camera wearing your shoes, sticking it, sticking their foot in, so it kind of looks weird like your foot is super extendable. No, because if you want it to go viral, it's got to be a dance that people can actually do in real life. Okay, it's got to have like three basic steps then. So we got to think of yeah. this, what are they going to be? Something that I don't know. You know you, when they see oh, it. well, you know, there's that thing of yeah, throwing exactly. shoes at someone you disrespect in the Middle East. Maybe you could <laughs> take your shoe off, smell it, and then throw it right past the camera. <laughs> oh my God! I wish I had a picture of Bush as a wing of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know, Michael. Do you know any choreographers? You know all sorts of types of artists. You know, no, but I think I think Andre needs to us? get a. I think Andre needs to get a, a tie if he's going to be Obama. Like, go to. Go to Salvation Army and buy a, a cheap tie for a dollar. Or I don't know if that's how we should sell it visually. I don't know what we're gonna do for it, the the last verse is gonna be sort of me as Romney and and Andre as Obama debating. But I'm not gonna be able to pull off a Romney. I you, mean, well, you got to wear a suit, but it's gonna say under you the you know your names, the president's well, I'm, names. I'm, I'm, I'm the, the Iranian names. Romney. Is that is that how it's gonna be? I think. With the beard? I, well, we <laughs> thought about having me do it because on Saturday Night Live, you know. Andre would be playing Obama, I'd be playing Romney, and you'd be playing Akhdaminamajad, Nima. But uh, you know, I, who does play Obama now? Um, it's not Keenan. They don't have the, the guy, black guy playing Obama. Th- it, oh, it's Fred Armiston, oh, who is isn't that it? Light skin guy from uh, isn't it the guy from Portlandia still? Fred Armiston, yeah, yeah, it's the guy who. Yeah, he's funny as hell. Uh, we, yeah, he is. He's kind of, he he's, you know. I think he's he, Hispanic or something. He can play any race. I mean, he played Karakian. He played, you know, he played. I think he has already. <laughs> I have this friend, I have this friend that's half black that lives uh, in uh, San Francisco. 
that I have some of my best friends are half black, but um, he, <laughs> he looks, he's not, he looks Italian, but his mother is really right. black. And we had him, he told me that he traveled all over the world, uh, like Europe and the Middle East with his dad when he was a kid or a teenager. And everywhere he went, people thought he was from there and started speaking to him in the, in the local nice. language. And he nice. called himself the universal Negro because he could do that. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Some people just have that face. Yep. Yeah. 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 So uh, what else? We Me do? being brown in Texas, I would always just get uh, assumed that I was Hispanic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People would always come up to me and start speaking Spanish. I'd be like, yo no sé. No, no yo no sé. sé. <laughs> and they think you're a rude Mexican that doesn't want to talk to them. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody's ever uh, mistaken me for another race. Unless they've heard me speak on the phone, not uh, seeing me in person, then they just all assume I'm white. I'm uh I get mistaken in Europe I get mistaken for German. I'm very little German and I'm mostly Irish and English. But uh a lot of places not even just Germany people would talk to me in German. I could see you being German. I could and see then, that. And then I'd start quoting Hitler in German to them. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. We don't like Hitler, you know. He's he's uh he's the playbook for Obama and Romney I think in some ways. I mean they're doing it slower and gentler for now, but he was democratically. He was Hitler. A kinder, Hitler was elected. <laughs> a kinder, gentler Führer. Yeah, Hitler was democratically <laughs> elected. Oh yeah, yeah, he was. Uh, people loved him. Uh, he gave great, yeah. he gave great speeches. You know, that's what they said about him. He's a great speaker. That's what they say about Obama yeah. too. Oh, he's a great speaker. Yeah, Obama's like three ply tyranny. Three ply tyranny. Three ply. <laughs> and and Hitler was it's five. Nice and comfortable. Yeah, Hitler was five alarm. <laughs> yeah. Five alarm tyranny. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. What does freedom mean? Tune in to LRN.FM to find out. LRN.FM is the Liberty Radio Network. A collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Uh, no, Hitler was that brown uh, tish, not tissue paper, but the stuff you use to wipe your hands off. You know, when you're out of toilet paper in the public God. restroom, and you got to use that. That's what like, was. like the stuff you can see the wood pulp in. Yeah, exactly. You can feel the wood pulp in. Yeah, <laughs> splinters in your asshole. So let's talk about a little more about production. So, um, we got to get all your files from you before the hurricane hits, because regardless of whether or not you're going to be wiped off the map, like the newspapers say to sell newspapers, there's a good possibility you're not going to have electricity and or internet. I think at some point for a few. Well, years. yeah, I, I do expect that uh, that the power is going to go out, but um, everything should be good by tomorrow. Cool. You going to be doing yeah. stink foot on video. You gotta send me. You gotta send me ten gotta, seconds of video. We gotta clip think to of what the stink foot is. Hey, why don't we fiend source it? Yeah, so anybody. Th this, I, I really don't think our audience is much into dancing and choreography. But maybe How do you know, man. Knows? How do you know? Because our yeah. audience is all men and straight men. Probably it's all middle aged uh, men who have too many guns and live in the hills. <laughs> what is yes. it? A peckerwood with too many guns who lives in the hills. That's a line from Shooter. And and the hills he lives in are in Wyoming too. You know what? You know what? What about what about uh, Derek J or or um oh who's the guy who's the guy who did the dance party the Washington dance party the guy that you oh, beefed with Adam yeah. Kokesh let's 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 see if Adam Kokesh no and he's Derek not a Jay he's not a dancer dance. he's not a dancer he just put that thing on and actually Eddie Free came up with the idea for it and you're forgetting that 
Uh, ah, but that's right. I think Derek well, J. I didn't, is, I didn't say came up with the idea. I said did it. He actually Der, Derek J. is a fashionable gay man, and I have his phone number. So you know, I guess that might be weird, but I think he's our go-to guy. <laughs> uh, I mean, it may sound may sound like bigotry, but yeah, yeah. Call the gay guy we know and see if he can teach us yeah. how to dance. Well, you know, <laughs> gay guys dance, right? <laughs> well, put it this way, you know, some some stereotypes are based on some grain of truth. Like when they say black people can dance better than white people, I've been to a funk concert and I've been to a Grateful Dead show, and there is some truth in that saying. <laughs> well, maybe it's just fans <laughs> of some music. Uh, of different genres of music <laughs> dance differently. Dave Chappelle did that thing about how white people want to dance oh, to oh guitar music and black oh, people want to What's his name drums. on guitar? That was awesome. John Mayer. And Quest and Quest Love and yeah, and that Quest was Quest Love. Yeah. Yeah, he's hit uh, that show's hit and miss, but uh there were some gems and that was one of them. I like it when he, John Mayer plays lead guitar in the boardroom and the lady starts taking off her top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought that show was fucking golden, man. Like, it's just, so I like did that too. Don't last. I don't think there was any misses. I, I think I like everything that was yeah, on the Chappelle show just about. Yeah, I really liked the like they had a, a show that was supposed to be like historical reenactment kind of stuff, documentary, and they you know like, great battles, and they had one of like the great battle of '86 at you know some projects in Brooklyn that all started with somebody stepping on someone's Adidas at a Dougie Fresh concert and turned into a war that lasted <laughs> decades. <laughs> <laughs> or, was, or was that a keeping it real goes wrong? Because that nope. was another. Keeping it real goes wrong. I love that. The the lawyer, man. The lawyer. The black lawyer played by Chappelle <laughs> who ends up in New Jersey <laughs> pumping gas. Yeah. Oh, he was like, the fuck all this. Give me some fire. Wu Tang. Wu Tang. <laughs> Wu Tang. <laughs> Wu Tang. <laughs> oh, yeah. and, um, yeah. I think my favorite drawing was the, uh, the one where they were making fun of uh, Kinko's because I actually used to work at a Kinko's. Yeah, like, yeah. And I'm like, yo, I, I saw I used to do all of that shit. And I'm like, if, if they have Windows, tell them to use Mac. And if they have Mac, tell them to use Windows. If they have both, tell them to use Linux. <laughs> yeah. Nice. We're going into a little uh, selling portion here. All right, we're back. We're back we're on back. the fiends. It's another production meeting of uh, "Do the Stink Foot" and Obama's feet stink here yeah. on the Freedom Fiends Live. We were, we were discussing ties, and you were like, "Yeah, I get a red tie." I'm like, "Yeah, I have a red tie." When I used to be a shill for the state on TV, uh, <laughs> whenever it would be a, like a, one of those patriotic days, like you know, 9/11 or Fourth of July or whatever the case was, I used to wear a navy blue suit, a white shirt, and a red tie. So I'd be wearing red, white, and blue. Well, I'm you were so in, glad I don't and, have to do that and anymore. You, were, you should do that for the video, though, if you're Romney. But you should. Uh, weren't you? You were in a red state when you moved to Washington. Isn't that a swing state? Did you wear two ties or two different color tie? Well, Washington is kind of split in half. In fact, uh, people your side in Washington, is the red state side. Yeah, people in Washington kind of throw around the idea of being split into two states. One called Cascadia or Olympia, which would be the west side, west of the mountains, where all the liberals are, and then you know the Inland Empire, which is the red side, the the desert farming side, uh, which is east of the mountains, which is where I was. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much the same politics, uh, Wyoming and Eastern Washington. Yeah. Except, except in Washington, everybody was way more statist just because the state is so much more omnipresent in Washington. Like, like literally, I think I've said this on the cast before, but literally people know like the numbers of the codes. Like there's, there's a legal code. I forget what they call it, but people would be like, well, that's against RW14.72. <laughs> and I'd be like, what oh, wow. the fuck are you talking about? Man, <laughs> who the hell knows high the school. numbers of the code? They probably teach it in high school. Like, well, here's what you do to get your tax money. You quote this yeah they don't yeah, teach the constitution but they teach like what local ordinances to use to, like government guns against people yeah exactly. they don't teach the bill of rights or, or the declaration of independence they teach uh yeah. yeah yeah they don't teach anything that would empower individuals only stuff that would make individuals empower the state. further to the state yeah mm -hmm. that's so square man so square wow this show is flying by this is our last segment huh i know i'm working on the show notes i'm stealing time from the fiends right now to work on the show notes <laughs> Uh, oh, since Andre's in the path of the hurricane, um, what's the what are people <laughs> like? Are, are people worried about it? Like, wh are what's they, the are they feeling on, on the ground on there? Prepper shows on prepper shows they uh, or preppers have a term for people who aren't prepared. They call them like pigeons because in an emergency they flap around with their arms waving everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Are um, people acting like that? I, I make it a pretty good point to to have most of what I need. But you know, today I went out and got. Uh, a few last minute things I needed. I went to the, to the grocery store near the house, and uh, a lot of the uh, shelves were just 
there. And, um, you know, the people were just, you know, in that panic mode where everybody's kind of like pushing past each other and just being kind of rude. Like, you can just feel the tension. Like, if somebody <laughs> punched your shoulder and then you turned around, like, excuse me, they probably fucking punch you or something like that. <laughs> like, it's, you know, they're just getting that desperate. So, it's wow. pretty pathetic. Wow. But, I mean, it's are they, are they time, evacuating so. or, or what? Are they going to do, like, an evacuation? No, nah, that I know was really leaving. I, I don't know anybody that's leaving. Um, I remember you know, uh, when part. Hurricane, when when Hurricane Rita hit Houston, like they like did a forced evacuation of where my mom lived, and like they had this evacuation route, which is silly because they have like evacuation routes, and it's always like one route, one main route, <laughs> and then and then everybody gets on it. And Houston, like the the metropolitan area, is like four or five million people, like some massive amount. And my mom said she got on I forty five that they wanted her to get on, and literally sat in uh the freeway which was had become a parking lot for 24 hours like nobody moved and people were running out of gas on the freeway it was ridiculous uh, oh, that is so hopefully insane. they don't try to force you to evacuate or anything like that evacuate my bowels <laughs> <laughs> you, you pulling a Nicki minaj michael <laughs> <laughs> no i'm sitting here playing croc hunter that's a, it's a first person dope shooter game Cro Cro <laughs> hunter. crocodile hunter Sounds fun. You can still do drugs in virtual reality. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to lose your sobriety date. You play Croak Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah, um, I, I've been playing uh, Skyrim a lot lately, and um, this seems to be a really uh, heavy uh, drug, um, a drug tone in the game because every time I turn around, there's somebody trying to sell me something called Skuma or something, Skuma. and it's always like some shady guy off the side of the road, like, hey. <laughs> I'm asking, I'm asking yeah. skooma. <laughs> skooma. Nice. That's good. Yeah. I like it. I, I love, I love I when video really games have him down without him trying to kill me. And I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't care that you sell. Like, I can't even be like an hand cap in the game. Like, <laughs> I know. You gotta be working. Because as soon as I put him down, he's like, oh, I can't have you snitching. It's like which, which, <laughs> th which thugs would you like to be represented by? <laughs> there needs to be a first person dope shooter game and cap. Uh, Crow Hunter game. Are, uh, you know, there are... I mean, I don't know much about games. You guys both game. I mean, uh, from what I've heard, Nima talk, though, like the closest thing to any kind of lib pair game is uh, Red Dead Redemption, isn't it? Because the, uh, the the government's the enemy. There's also... Yeah, that, it, so there's I, also I don't know if you're being hand cap. There's also... But well, in, in you, you, you take what you can get. I mean, there's there's also Homefront, which is, you know... The United States has invaded. The government has abandoned you, and you have to form militias with your neighbors to defend your neighborhood. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you haven't seen that? That's I played that one a little. It's amazing, and it's written by the guy who wrote Apocalypse Now. Well, I might actually have to look into that now. Like some of the big games, just kind of I just missed some of them for some reason. But I have to go back and look into that. Yeah, it's it's a really cool. It's really violent, but it's like, you know, and it's kind of cool because not a lot of uh, it takes place like in the here and now. I mean, I guess like, you know, what's the one where you shoot prostitutes? I guess it does too. But um, Grand Theft Auto. You know, I remember playing this like per this arcade game a long time ago uh, in Buffalo when I was on tour with my band bomb, it was like a really low bit res thing. And it was like, you're, you're supposed to be like out shooting bad guys. And at one point, just to see what happened, I shot one of the cops in the game and the game and it said, what are you doing? And then I did it again. And then I did it and I did it again. And it was like game over. Oh, wow. Oh, really? Did but it, game? Like, but it, didn't even give you a chance to fight back? No, it, it scolded me though. It was like, what are you doing? Like a human voice in the game said that. <laughs> What what was the if name of the game? If you kill a cop in a video game, it'll steal your quarter. <laughs> it'll steal your soul. <laughs> it'll steal your soul and walk the earth. No, I don't know what the game was called. Is it a truck stop? I have no idea. Is that a truck stop? Okay. Hmm. It was hmm. called like shoot the bad guys in the face over and over and over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's an onion reference. You ever seen that? It's like an onion uh -huh. news piece about some first person shooter game. It's called like face shooter, and you just shoot people <laughs> in the face for the whole game, like at point blank range with all different. Oh weapons. wow. Yes. So I'm about to look that one up. Yeah, it's on the onion. Just search onion face shooter. Onion news. I mean, onion, those dudes are fucking geniuses, man. Yeah, I'm, they are. I'm playing uh I'm playing old school games right now, man. I I decided to take a step back. I uh Pong hooked up I, I, I did a Saturn, Sega Saturn emulation on my PC oh, wow. and I 
I've been using my um my PS3 controller to, as a controller because I was able to to figure that out too. And uh, I've been playing Panzer Dragoon Saga and Shining Force Three. Um, oh and Panzer God, Dragoon Panzer Saga, Dragon. awesome. Do what? I said Panzer Dragon is fucking awesome. Oh yeah. Well, this is the RPG Panzer Dragoon Saga, and it's completely amazing. And there is a, kind of a libertarian anarchist twist in it, right? Like the whole thing is um, the Empire is trying to dig up all these ancient weapons, and there's like a rogue uh, Imperial general who decides to rebel against them. But he's not the good guy because he shoots like your um, your general or whatever, or your your boss, and you up- get upset at him. And so you go you go after him, and he's like explaining to you about how he wants to control the thing called the tower which is the thing that controls the world and all the monsters in the world it's what the ancients left us uh and i think that that's a metaphor for the state because it ends up being that um you you find this other group of third people who are kind of like anarchists they're called the seekers uh and they decide they want to destroy the tower they're like well there's no reason we need to be controlled by the ancients theories and and what the ancients did to us there's no reason we need to keep that around in our life we need to be free from the control um and so i I haven't finished playing it again and I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure that that in the end you destroy the tower and you destroy the ancient hold on on society, which I think is a metaphor for the state. At least uh, being an anarchist playing it. That's awesome. I, yeah, it's, it's, it's really funny cool. how you know ideas like that of you know escaping that type of of horrible slavery is acceptable in the video game, but as soon as you start to you know, try to apply that to <laughs> real life. I mean, not actually like right. destroying something, but you know, just trying to separate yourself from that, or you know, not exactly. have people dig in their pockets well, for people, whatever you want. I mean, then all of a sudden, you're a coop. I mean, think about even on a simpler level, like how many people shoot people all the day, all day long in video games, but don't think you should be able to carry a gun to protect yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> Calling in drone strikes. Did you uh, sit there over the debate? They uh, they ran a poll of all of the like Xbox players that were um, viewing the debate via their Xboxes, <laughs> and they were asking, should there be more drone strikes or whatever? And <laughs> I think it was like eighty percent of the people were just like, yeah. <laughs> is there a drone wow. strike video? Is there a drone video Not game even, yet? Should there be drone strikes? But should there be more <laughs> in addition to the one that right. are already happening now? Well, thanks for uh, hang on here a sec. We'll talk to you after. This has been a great Freedom Fiends. Thanks, Andre. Yeah, Thanks, yes. Nima. Thank you, Worms. Michael. Yeah. Worms. Gamers want to actually use real drones. I think that's where they recruit from for the drone pilots. <laughs> gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is your property.